Hi, I'm Wendy Vernon. I live in Carroll Stream, Illinois, and I'm a volunteer solar ambassador with the Illinois Solar Education Association. Last year, in spring of 2019, my husband and I had solar panels installed on the roof of our home along with a battery backup. We decided to go solar because generating electricity from solar is much better for the environment than by using fossil fuels, and also we learned we could save a lot of money by going solar. Here you can see our solar panels. Our house faces south, so we have our panels on the front side of our house. We decided to get a new roof before installing solar panels because our roof was old and at best had only a couple of years left on it. Solar panels last a long time and it is expensive to remove and reinstall them in order to replace the roof. We have 19 300 watt panels installed for a total of 5.7 kilowatts. Our system is sized to produce a little over 100% of our electricity needs. So the way our system works is that when the sun shines down on the solar panels, it excites electrons in our panels and this creates DC electricity. DC electricity cannot be directly used by our house. It has to be converted to AC electricity before it can be used and this will be done later on when the electricity reaches our basement through an inverter. The DC electricity is sent through wires which are encased in conduit. You can see the conduit here coming from the roof and running along the bottom east side of our house. The wires then travel to the back of our house before heading down to our basement. Here we have a solar quick disconnect and a battery quick disconnect. These quick disconnects are in case we have a fire and the firefighters need to turn off power from our solar array and battery to our house. To the right of our quick disconnects is our electric meter. This meter is installed by the electric company and all electricity that is pulled or sent to the grid is measured by this meter and kept track of by the utility. The utility gives us credits for extra electricity that we produce and send to the grid and then when we are not producing enough electricity we can use these credits to offset the cost of electricity that we take from the grid. This is done through a program that is called net metering. Here is what our system looks like in our basement. When the electricity reaches our basement, it goes through our solar edge inverter, which you can see on the left, and is converted to AC electricity, as I mentioned earlier. From here, the electricity travels to our service panels to serve the electric loads in our house. Just to the right of the inverter is our critical load panel, which I will talk about in a minute, and to the right of it is our main service panel. Here is our LG Chem 9.8 kilowatt hour backup battery. Our battery takes up a fair amount of space. We could have installed the battery and inverter outside, but we chose to install them inside because we felt they might last longer not being exposed to the outdoor elements. It was a tough decision for us to purchase our battery because it added considerable cost to our system. For economical reasons, it might not be considered practical to purchase a battery right now. Prices of batteries will go down in the future and the storage on them will continue to get better. We decided to purchase our battery anyways for the security of having a backup in case we have a power outage. We have heard that there are predictions for power outages to become more frequent in the future and for longer periods of time due to climate change. If your solar installation is tied to the grid, then you cannot use your solar when the grid is down because it is dangerous to have solar supplying power to the grid when people are working on it. However, if you install a battery and the grid is down, the battery can supply power to a critical load panel. The solar panels can then charge the battery when the sun comes up. You will not be able to power your whole house this way because there is a limit to how many things you can have on your critical load panel and the battery only has so much power. We have our sump pump, furnace fan, refrigerator, freezer, a few lights, TV, and laptop computers hooked up to our critical load panel. A couple of weeks ago, we had a bad storm in our area, which caused the grid to go down for over 48 hours, and we were able to power all of these items for the time that we were down. The sun was out after the storm, so when the power went back at 5 o'clock p.m. two days later, our battery was fully charged. Our Solar Edge inverter came with monitoring software, which is really nice to use. The dashboard summarizes what is happening with our system at the moment. Here we can see that the sun is shining, empowering our house, and sending extra electricity to the grid, and that our battery is 100% charged. 
Here we can see how much power our solar panels have produced and how much electricity we have consumed so far for the entire day. We can also view this information by week, by month, and by year. There is also a view to show how much electricity each individual solar panel has produced. Here are the financials for our system. Since the battery is a significant expense, I split out the costs with and without the battery. 56% of our system cost was funded by federal and state incentives. The federal tax credit has gone down this year to 26%, will go down to 22% in 2021, and is scheduled to go away in 2022 for residential systems. The state incentive is also scheduled to go down as more solar is installed in Illinois and will go away once the program is completed. For this reason, if you are considering going solar, now is a good time to do it to take advantage of these federal and state incentives. Here is a summary of what our electric bills were before and after our solar was installed. We have saved a lot of money on our electric bills since we have gone solar. If you are interested in going solar, I really recommend that you talk to at least three installers to get quotes and to ask lots of questions. Make sure that you really understand any contracts that you are asked to sign before purchasing your system. A good place to start looking for installers is the Find a Professional tool on the ICEA website. I use this tool to find my installer and found it very helpful. For more information on solar, visit the ICEA website at www.illinoisolar.org.